Hey everybody, David Shapiro here for another tutorial video. Today we are going to go over um, Fine Tuning 101 Data Prep. So, uh, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm a big fan of synthetic data sets, especially because one, it's fast, two, it's relatively cheap, and three, you get exactly what you want. So what I want to do is show you an example of how to get synthetic data. Now, one thing to keep in mind with fine tuning is that you're not actually training the model to do anything new. GPT-3 is already trained on many hundreds of gigabytes worth of data. Everything that you ask it to do, it already knows how to do. So the purpose of fine tuning is to narrow down to say, do this one thing every time. Now, because fine tuning is about removing possibilities, um, you want to make sure that your fine tuning data has a broad variety so that it has seen um, many uh, examples. Um, and we'll get into advanced fine tuning techniques later. Um, I'll probably do a video going over my question generating um, bot um, because the more variety you show for the input, and the more uh, and the, and the more examples you give in terms of that breadth of variety and like different formats, the better it will perform. Now, when you're doing synthetic data in the way that I'm about to show you, it's a very consistent format. Um, but anyways, so I wanted to start with something very simple, which was just imagine a complete and detailed plot synopsis for a blank you know genre set in a location during a time. And then the story should be, uh, you know, add a couple of modifiers, write out the entire plot premise in great detail. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, the Instruct series models are not the best at going in at long form writing. Um, but you see, this one's okay. It's doing all right. Um, so uh, it, it does a pretty good job. It, it's almost like a movie poster. It's not actually like writing out the story. Um, but this is good enough for now. Um, with a little bit more prompt engineering um, here. Actually, let's try it. Let's instead of premise, let's say outline and see if that modifies it. Um, yeah, that looks like it's a little bit more detailed, um, but it's still not actually writing the whole story because um, part of the problem is that GPT-3 was not trained on actual like plot outlines. And actually, if you watch my other videos, um, uh, getting getting GPT-3 to actually write fiction is really difficult. So I'll modify the prompt to say, instead of premise, I'll say plot outline. Um, and we'll just change this here as well. So we're going to say write plot outlines. Okay, so we've got this. Um, this is the prompt that I'm going to use, and I'm going to auto-populate it with different things. So this is a really quick way to get a broader variety of data is where you ask it to do kind of the same prompt, but you give it a bunch of different modifiers. Um, so f effectively what I'm gonna do is give it, you know, 200 different prompts, and I'm gonna record that output and then use that for fine tuning data. Um, and so the script that I've got, oops, uh, is here, here, I did something wrong. Do, 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 okay. The script that I've got is synthesize plots. Um, so what I've got is I've got a list of genres a list of modifiers, a list of places, and a list of periods. So you get all this, you can get a lot of variety, you can get a lot of combinations. Um, the first time I ran it, I had uncommented all these and it was like gonna generate 2000 different samples. Um, I'm not gonna spend that much on a tutorial video. So I cut it down to four by four by four by four. So four to the fourth power is 256. So I've got four examples of each, of, of each thing. And then you might also notice that I've got the, uh, up here, the UUID. So UUID, let me just show you what it looks like. Whoops, synthesize plots, there we go. Okay, so this is this is showing you the, the prompts that it's gonna run. So it starts with a UUID up at the top. A UUID is just a random string of hexadecimal characters. Um, but one thing that I found is that this does a really good job of, um, of causing GPT-3 to have a little bit more internal entropy by starting it with a UUID. It's like, okay, I'm reading this. I don't, I don't know how to make sense of it. So it's trying to create an internal state that doesn't make any sense. So you, 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 you prime it to be a little bit more different, a little bit more random. Um, this is especially good if you need to run the same prompt over and over and over again. So you do this in combination with a high temperature and you'll get a lot more variety. But anyways, you can see where it's populated out. Imagine a complete and detailed plot outline for a science fiction film set in India during the 1990s. The story should be supernatural and otherworldly. 
write out the entire plot, uh, uh, write out the entire plot outline in great detail. Um, and then you see the number here, 256. So if you go back here, you say, I just did a quick count to keep track of how many it generated, just to show you that's what it's doing. So we can comment this out since we don't need this. Um, and then what we'll do is I have some, some canned functions that I use. So here's the, uh, here's the GPT-3 completion. Um, use text of NGO2, temperature 1, top P of 1, tokens 1,000. It's not generating anywhere near that much. Um, and then we'll save, we'll save all this out to GPT-3 logs. But then what are we going to do with the actual prompt and completion, right? Because for fine-tuning, you need a prompt and a completion. And we're not going to just record these prompts. What would be the point of that? We're not actually adding anything. So what we got to do is we're going to then um, format a prompt to look a little bit different. So we'll say uh, completion equals GPT-3 completion. Um, and then we'll feed in my prompt. But I've got, all, I've got the genre, the modifier, the place, and the period. So what I want to do is I'll save the... Um, the out the um, the out prompt as it'll be a text that uh, basically what I'll do is I'll just say um, uh, let's see genre equals that and then new line and then I'll say uh, location is dollar s and so this dollar s I'll show you what I'm going to do with this in just a second um, genre location um, period and then um, and then modifier. And so then we'll do that. And then we'll do new line, new line. Um, and then we'll do plot outline. And then we'll add a little space. And so basically what this will look like, let me show you what the, what the actual final prompt will look like. Um, so instead of this, it will have location, period, modifier, and then double new line, um, plot outline. And so it'll be like, you know, um, sci-fi, or I guess I had it out as um, science fiction. Location will be India. Period will be um, the Renaissance. Um, and then the modifier will be like cerebral and what did I say? Like spooky or whatever. Um, uh, cerebral and suspenseful. Okay. Okay, so given just these little bit of information, um, like if I just if I just put this into GPT three right now, it's it, it'll probably work a little bit. Oh, I misspelled suspenseful. Did, where did I did I misspell that here? I was just here. Okay, I don't think I misspelled it up here. Um, suspenseful, yeah, correct. Okay. Um, It'll probably figure out what I want to do. Okay, yeah. So because it's fine-tuned, um, it can figure it out. Um, it's not the best. Uh, it certainly is just a plot premise. It's not as complete um, as what was generated before. Um, but also this is with Text DaVinci 02, which is um, already fine-tuned to follow instructions. So uh, another thing that you can do is once you generate data, and we'll get into this. Let me do a quick time check, actually. Um, okay, eight minutes. We've got just a few minutes left. Um, you can also go in and augment stuff. So one thing that I like to do is um, go to the edit model, um, which is free right now. At least it was. Um, and you can say, like, make this more detailed. So uh, let's... Um... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, darn, it got rid of what I, what I wrote. Okay. Anyways, point being, I'll show you. I'll show you the edit endpoint, and this will be in a in an, an advanced uh, tutorial as well. Anyways, let's go back to our work. Um, okay, so we've got the completion. So this is going to be the actual um, plot synopsis, and then the out prompt is this. And I showed you what this is going to look like here. Oh yeah, here. Um, let me just go ahead and show you. Um, so we'll give it. We'll get a plot outline. <clears throat> In an alternate history in India. <laughs> oh, now this is fun. Um, so apparently India invents AI during the Renaissance. That's kind of cool, actually. All right. So here's here's a here's a food for thought later on. You can use the edit endpoint, um, and so we'll say um, 
let's see, um, expand this plot outline to include more detail, um, make it a complete story uh, outline. And we'll turn the temperature all the way up because higher temperature generally leads to more creativity. It can also lead to some random stuff that you don't want. But anyways, so another thing that you can do in, in preparing your data is you can use the edit endpoint to further augment the data. So by baking in multiple steps, you can then have a data set that is trained to do um, more stuff. Oh, here we go. Um, so this is a much longer um, plot synopsis. So this is perfect. I'm not going to do this this time, but just I wanted to show you that this is a thing you can do. You can use the edit endpoint to further augment your training data. So this is great. Um, let's see. Delighted in the stories. Ascetics. Transmutation. I think it actually did like an entirely different story. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know that it actually, uh, yeah. Okay. The, the, like I said, if you have the really high temperature, you can get stuff that you really do not do not expect. Um, all right, moving on. We'll come back to uh, augmenting techniques in a later video. Um, okay, so here we are. This is what we want the, the prompt to look like. So this is what we're going to record. And then the output will just be the completion. Um, and so then what we do is we'll do save file. Um, and actually let's do a file name real quick. File name equals time plus, uh, dot text. Um, actually no file name will be, um, will be, uh, let's see. I need to remove the ands from it. So we'll do, what's the shortest one? So we'll do place, um, place period, genre, okay, yeah. Place plus period plus genre plus modifier. Um, and then we will, because each one of these is going to be unique. It's only going to touch it once. Um, so then we'll do replace um, space with nothing. And then we'll also do replace um, the and sign, because I don't think, I don't think uh, it'll save that as a file. Um, and then we'll add dot text and then we'll do save file. So the content of the file will be, um, wait, make sure I, uh, file path is first. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to save the prompt out to prompts and then we'll do uh, percent file name and then we'll do out prompt and then we'll do save file. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saving the prompt and completion with the same file name, but to different folders. So then we'll do completions dollar S or a percent S percent file name and then completion. Um, and there you have it. That should be it. Um, so what I like to do is for a quick debug, because you obviously before you spend a lot of tokens, you want to make sure it works right. Um, so I, I print out the prompt here. But then let's also, um, just so we can watch while it's going here, we'll do, we'll just copy this. Um, so we'll do print out prompt and then print completion. Um, cause why not, you know, if you're bored and you're watching your data run, why not just do it? Um, okay. So let's do CLS to clear the screen. Um, oops, you have to wrap the text in actual quotations. Okay. So we'll let it generate one and then we'll see what happens. So this is a romance and comedy set in France during the Renaissance. This should be fun. Oh, I forgot to do a thing. Um, yeah, I bet, I bet this, I bet it didn't lurk right. So this is why you check your work. So during the Renaissance in France, two lovers, Pierre and Marie must overcome tremendous obstacles to be together. Their families rival noble, our rival noble houses. Oh, this is fun. Um, war is brewing. This sounds like war in the Vendane. Um, <laughs> undaunted Pierre and Marie meet in secret, planning to elope, betrayed by one of Marie's maidservants. Oh, this is fun. Jealous older brother, Henri, uh, in a fierce battle, they are mortally wounded and Marie's art dies in Marie's arms. Uh, he tells her to flee. Marie uh, refuses. So yeah, this is, this is romance and comedy. Um, I don't really see much comedy in here. 
um, as the lover souls depart this world, they vow to find each other again in the next life. So it looks like the, uh, the modifier is kind of hijacking it. I don't really see how you could make the, I mean, it's certainly romance, but it's not a comedy. <laughs> so sometimes these things are, are conflicting, but let's check the output data to make sure that it did what I expected. Okay. So the completion looks right. Um, I like how it's <laughs> France, the Renaissance, romance, comedy, cerebral, suspenseful, dot text. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what you're getting. Um, okay, so that's good. The completion looks right, but I think the prompt is wrong. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> um, okay, so let's fix that. Let's um, actually, yeah, let's just go ahead and delete that and delete the completion. It'll regenerate it um, anyways. Uh, no, don't keep it in. No, don't keep it in. Um, okay, so out prompt. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. So um, you do the percent, and then when you have multiple placeholders, you need to do um, need to put it in an iterable like this. So we do um, genre period uh, no genre look uh, place period modifier. So that should be right, and that sh that should be fully populated. Um, okay, so then let's run this again just to make sure. And let's make this a little bigger. So here's the initial input. And it'll take a second. Oh, this is much longer, much better, much better. Okay. So um, here's the initial input. Here's how we're reformatting that input. So it'll be like this. And then this is the output. When Catherine de' Medici is widowed, this is Italy. Um, she's a skilled politician, but not well loved. So this is much longer. This is what we would kind of want to see. Um, so let's go make sure that the data looks right. So the completion, here it is. Um, there we go. Completions and then prompts and there's the prompt. Um, and so then what you do after this is you just, you remove the escape, um, and you let it go and you've synthesized data and we are at 17 minutes. So this is a little bit longer than I try and make my tutorials. Um, so the last thing is just do this and let it run. Um, so I will go ahead and set this to run and then tune in for the uh, next video where we'll go over data prep. And I think probably what I'll do is, is talk about data augmentation and cleanup at that time, because that's all part of data prep. So anyways, thanks for watching. Tune in again, and I'll see you all again soon.